stars shining bright above you. Nice. That's my man Steve, by the way, Engineer Steve, bringing us in nice and soft and lovingly. Does that sound familiar, Anna? Oh, yeah, that is my voice. <laughs> that is the first album. Is that off the first? first yes. Yeah. Made a couple years ago now. It's called Longing and available on iTunes. There you go. <laughs> hey, Stash Nation, thanks for checking us out. We're hanging out in the studio live with Anna Danes, who you just heard rejoin us right there. Very lovingly, by the way. Love that little track. Thank you. AnnaDanes.com. Anna, I feel like we sort of set the table right in the beginning. And I always love tracking the hero's journey. And, and that's what you are, not only to us right now, but to Stash Nation here and listening and to learn about you for the first time. Um, if someone were to bump into you at maybe a party or something, and they're like, hey, you know, what do you do? What's, what's the best answer that you come up with? The shortest answer is I am a singer. Definitely. And then you turn and walk away. Oh, and then, then I give them the backstory. <laughs> <laughs> well, give us the backstory then. The backstory is, well, usually the next question that gets asked is like, oh, really? <laughs> How long have you been doing that? Okay, hold on. Let me, let me play along. Oh, my God, Really? You're a singer. A singer? <laughs> Go on. Well, a funny thing happened on the way to <laughs> my daughter's music lesson about three years ago. She was seven at the time and was bored with her fourth lesson, didn't want to attend. And I made her do it because it was paid for and just decided that she really wasn't going to sing, sat in the corner of the room and folded her arms. And I said, you're going to sing. <laughs> and uh, the answer was still no. So the teacher brought me up and I started to sing and something inside me opened up and I've been I've never felt better actually just started pursuing it from that moment I was singing beautiful love songs at Mm. a time when my marriage was breaking down Mm. and it just felt really really good Mm. one thing led to another more lessons the right mentor Larry White at California Music Studios in Encinitas and um, ended up in the right uh, on the right path with the right people Wow. That led to my first album. That's incredible, Jen. Isn't it amazing? Yeah. What a story. That is a cool story. Thank you. And it was very empowering and it was freeing on many levels because it just made me look really deep inside who I am and what I want to be doing. And those feelings I was expressing were good feelings, real feelings. I realized I was really missing them in my personal life. And Mm. the music really freed me from a situation that wasn't meant to be. Yeah. Wow. That's that's beautiful. That's amazing. And it's the power of music and the power of passion. Yes. And a wonderful thing about Anna is, you know, she found this passion within herself and now she's sharing this light with others. And um, tell us a little bit about Find Your Wings and um, your mission there. So it's been such a journey for me, music. It was so much more than I originally signed up for. I thought I was just going to continue singing lessons. One thing led to another, and I was on this path with so much love and support behind me, guiding me, telling me, do it. Yes, you can. You should. Absolutely. We believe in you. And so um, this logo that my company now has um, just kind of happened organically. Uh, You see it everywhere at my concerts and on my merchandise. It's a heart filled with music notes, which is Mm. the love of my life, music. The wings stand for all the friends and angels and even strangers who helped me on my journey through a difficult but also a promising time. Mm. And the crown is simply for being, you know, the queen of your destiny or the king. You're in charge of your life. So do what you were meant to do. I love that. I love that. It's a true definition of living your dream. Finding yes. your wings and just going for it, no Go matter what. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, Can, working and, very hard on it. And a lot of times people, when when they hear someone's story, right, so like they would love to just sort of control all delete to where you got to, right? And then they can find themselves back in that genesis. So like, what was the thing that happened somewhere along that way? It was like, boom, you can look back and say, that was where it turned for me. Was it a person who came in your life and... Boom, next thing you know, your trajectory changed forever. Was it something somebody said to you that gave you the confidence? And boom, next thing you know, your trajectory changed forever. What, what was it for you? Hearing myself record it for the first time, we did a couple of demos at Peter Sprague Studio in Lucadia. And when I heard the, uh, the first take, I was surprised, and pleasantly so. And I realized, 
oh, that sounds okay. I guess we can keep doing this. <laughs> yeah. That's all I want to do. And any musician will tell you recording is like a drug. Mm. It's so, it's, it's like a painter standing in front of a canvas. Once you get going, it, the creativity just starts to flow and burst out of you sometimes. And it's a beautiful thing. That's amazing. Well, I can't wait to hear your latest recordings and to hear everything that's been coming to life at Capitol Records. <laughs> and for our listeners out there, if you'd like to hear more of Anna's songs and just learn more about her performances, you can go to AnnaDanes.com or you can call at 858-967-8090. And we're so pleased to have Miss Anna Danes on the show today. Thank you so much thank for joining you. us. Thank you. Thank you. Always fun to work with Jennifer. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And uh, we had a wonderful uh, experience with Anna uh, interviewing her for the magazine for Delmar Lifestyle. Um, and, you know, that was really my first experience hearing her perform and just getting a chance to really get to know her um, on a personal level, on a professional level. And um, she's just been a pleasure to work with. So um, thank you for always being awesome. Oh, my God. <laughs> Thank you. You know, I think something, that if, if, I, if, if you guys will allow me this uh, thread to kind of go back on to, is the, the, the timing of this thing is what kind of jumps out to me. Like, I heard you say it a couple times. Did you say, like, three years? Yeah. Like, that's insane. You know, like, most people, they have to do this for 10, 20, and then they're like, oh, they finally are an opener from some <laughs> cool thing, right? So, like, how did you do it so fast? Yes, three years ago is when the lessons first started. Um, that's right. Oh, my gosh. It, is. it hasn't been that long. I was just very, very focused on, on this, and it became a real passion, and I, I've been giving it my all every single day. I put in long hours doing this, doing the, uh, the back end of music. Performing is probably 5% of what music is, but there's so much more that goes into it. I just fully dedicated myself to it. I, I really did. And I, I'm blessed to have also been able to surround myself with people that already knew the business and guided me. Mm. But it was always my business. I've mm. never signed with a label. This mm. is my own uh, record label, DLG Recordings. Mm. And really just the support is what got me here. The support of, of, of these wonderful individuals that work with me. I have a manager. His name is Niels Schroeder. He's incredibly talented individual and uh, speaks from the heart and wants the best, which is a blessing. And I have an amazing team around me that, that helps me produce everything. But ultimately, it's up to you and you're kind of guiding the ship. Yeah, I, that makes sense to me. And the other thing that comes up is that everybody wants to make good music. Yes. You know, and you think about how many countless thousands of hours it takes to, to make bad music, Right. <laughs> you know? And yeah. so, but one of the things that, that um, had jumped out for me when I was learning more about you is that your, your goal is to make high-end, top quality. Yes. So how do you do that? I set the bar pretty high for myself. A good example is this the latest album. We took a year to produce it because I wanted everything to be just right. So I wrote half of the uh, material with some incredible writers up in Los Angeles, mm. Cindy Alexander and Dave Darling and Mary Harris. They've all had long careers in music, so we sat down and we laid out a plan. What do you want to express and how? And the songs are basically, the originals are my stories. I wanted that to be on the album. And the next uh, task I gave them is, well, I'd like to work with the best musicians in town, and I want the flavor of the album to be an homage to Tony Bennett and Bill Evans, an album they made in 1975, where it's just a pristine jazz purist album where Tony was at his best and it gave him his comeback in his career. Mm. Wow. Um, and that's what I was shooting for. And then when they asked me, well, where would you like to record it? It was a no brainer. Mm -hmm. Well, duh. <laughs> where wouldn't you record you're like, it? You're like my garage with the foam pad on the wall or perhaps Capitol Records. There was no other option to me. <laughs> There's a lot of great studios in L.A., but none of them have that cachet in the history yeah. and those microphones and those walls. <laughs> <laughs> so that's amazing. So now when you walk in, is it like a trip down memory lane for every great jazz musician that ever was and ever could be? Yes. Yeah. And so much more in those walls, too, because uh, a lot of great albums were made there, period. Rock and roll, everybody yeah. was played there. Yep. Capitol Records is, you know, one of those 
it's it just we talk about vibration. When you hear the word Capitol Records, everyone knows Capitol Records, and it's such a prestige label. So it's such a blessing to be yep. able to have recorded there and be part of that history. It is a blessing, and I count my blessings every day. I don't take any of that for granted, the fact that I was able to do that on my own. Thank you. So, um, and working with the uh, people at Capitol was also wonderful. Paula Salvatore, who's been there for 20-some years, and Steve Genowick, who is uh, Al Schmidt's uh, right-hand man. Al Schmidt is, of course, probably the best engineer in the world. Um, and so it was that kind of teamwork that was involved. Yeah. The, the cool thing about jazz as a, as a genre is that it's a true consortium, right? You know, and so, like, in order to be great at jazz, you can't be um, a soloist. No. You know, it's like you have to play well with others, yes. you know, and, and bring out the best in everybody. Yes. And so I got to imagine that this has got to be one of your unique abilities if you've if you've ascended so quickly in this in this genre. Um, and I would only may pose it as a question like when you're done performing with the greatest out there, what do they turn to you and say at that point in time? Like it's probably like, oh, man, you're this or oh, man, you're that like. What, 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 what do you, what's the feedback you typically get that they don't say, oh man, you're great. They say that was fun. Can't wait uh, to do it again. Call me. <laughs> I love that. Point for fun. <laughs> That's awesome. Point for fun, That's right? Perfect. Yeah. Yes. Thousand points for fun. Yeah. Because that's when the magic happens. The magic happens there. There's no pressure. We all enjoy what we do. They're all masters at what they do. And we all just try to bring out the best in each other and support each other. And there's no judgment. I love that. That's amazing. So now I wanted to take it back for a minute to Capitol Records and talk about seeing some of these greats on the wall and um, really want to know who inspires you and who are you encouraged by? Yeah. Besides the Bill Evans, Tony Bennett album, that was the original idea behind this one. Uh, of course, my number one influence is Mr. Sinatra himself and his spirit is in that building, everywhere you look, you can almost feel it. And uh, when they took out all the microphones that we were able to use, I mean, there was probably half a million dollars worth of microphones I could choose from. And they made sure I had the ones that Frank used to use <laughs> with the sticker on them and everything. And so Frank's been a big influence because um, he actually sang from the heart. He worked really hard on his phrasing. He worked really hard on the emotions you can hear the feelings in all his music, and uh, he just knew how to convey that. That is such a talent. So as I'm driving anywhere on my multiple trips to L.A. every month, I pretty much listen to the Sinatra station on satellite radio and still try to learn those nuances. There's still so much to learn from him. Absolutely. Wow, that's amazing. And what an honor to be able to have sung with the microphone that Frank Sinatra himself yes. recorded with. Yes, and they took it one step further for me on our last day of recording. They were so awesome at Capitol, just professional staff, and they knew what I was going after, so they took out the window panels from storage where Frank um, used to record in between these window panels in the middle of Studio A, and then the microphone would be hung off the ceiling, and his orchestra was around him somewhere, and so we did that. We were able to record one song live at Capitol from start to finish. Oh, the wow. old way. <laughs> oh, I love it. Bringing it old back old yes, school. Yes, and that song is that's all. Oh, I love that. Now, Jen, I don't know how in the world we're going to make a transition to remind people this is a sports talk <laughs> radio show. But you know, we do have some affiliates over at CBS, and for the folks maybe listening in on the roof right now, or you know, pedaling the the gravel trucks, we're going to get you all caught up on the sports commentary <laughs> coming up at the break. But then after that. God, I feel like there's, uh, you know, vibrations aside, there's a couple gaps that I'd still like to learn a little bit more about our, our esteemed guest. Perhaps maybe what are some of the biggest misconceptions that people have about you? And then I'd love to learn a little bit more about maybe your, your favorite success story along your journey so far. So we'll get more into that, and I'm sure tons more that we could not possibly account for uh, with Anna right after this. We'll be right back.